Good evening. I'd like to call the 13th regular meeting of the 2020-21 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Leadership and learning are indispensable to each other. Thank you very much. Would the clerk then call the roll? Alderperson Ackley. <clears throat> Alderperson Ackley. Alderperson Bourne. Here. Alderperson Decker. Here. Alderperson Donahue. Here. Alderperson Feldy. Here. Alderperson Mitchell. Here. Alderperson Phillips. Here. Alderperson Savaglio. Here. Alderperson Sorensen. Here. Alderperson Felicki Paneski. Here. There are nine present. Thank you very much. And Betty Ackley is excused. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next is approval of the minutes from our 12th regular council meeting, which was held on September 21st. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move for approval of our previous uh, minutes. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Those minutes are before you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion. Aye. Motion passes. Next item uh, is public forum. City clerk. There is no one this evening. Very good. Then we'll move on uh, to the mayor's announcements. First of all, I'd like to uh, review the uh, COVID numbers for the last week. So as of today, uh, we now have uh, 2,369 positive tests. That's up 683 from the numbers last week. Right now we have 295 active uh, cases and that's up 103 from last week. We now have 1,547 people who have recovered, and that's up 69 from the previous numbers. Uh, we have 11 uh, people in the hospital versus 13 last week. And unfortunately, we had three more deaths this week. We're up to 19 deaths versus the 16 from last week. And we have 40,917 uh, negative tests registered, and that's up 4,029 from last week's numbers. Wisconsin has been identified as a COVID-19 hotspot in the United States. Sheboygan County has contributed to the outbreak of these new cases. Some of our uptick in the cases has been caused by the outbreak at the Kettle Moraine Correctional Facility, where roughly one-third of their inmate population has tested positive for COVID-19. There continues to be isolated uh, positive cases reported at some of the Sheboygan schools. Uh, the ones that are affected are the Sheboygan Central High School, Sheboygan North High School, Sheboygan South High School, Lutheran High School, and then some elementary schools, Grant, Longfellow, and Sheridan Elementary Schools. At this time, the schools continue to mix school days with virtual learning and in-place learning. Sheboygan County Safe Restart Plan, uh, we are currently in phase two and we remain there, but uh, we have a lot of uh, negative markers right now and are on the brink of falling back into phase one. Sheboygan County school risk level uh, is currently at the high risk level and Governor Evers uh, recently continued the mask order through the uh, late November. 
and was welcomed to see many of our commercial businesses taking action to require masks while shoppers conduct business in their fa facilities. It's good to see that they recognize the role that this can play to help protect the health and well-being of the community that they serve by following the evolving guidance of our health officials. Remember to wear a mask and slow the spread of coronavirus in Sheboygan. Join the Mask Up campaign. Thank you. Next, uh, today we have a proclamation to present for National Arts and Humanities Month. I'd like Katie Gladusky to please come forward. Uh, I want to introduce some of the other uh, uh, people from the different organization. Katie's with the Weill Center for the Performing Arts. Jackie Erdman is with Above and Beyond Children's Museum. Josh Herenday is with the Sheboygan Symphony Orchestra. Travis Gross is with the Sheboygan Historical Museum. Uh, Garrett Erickson is with the Mead Public Library. You guys should stay. Uh, Jackie Blindauer is the board president of the Sheboygan Theater Company. And Sam Gatmeyer is with the John Michael Kohler Arts Center. That's fine. A proclamation. Whereas the nation's 120,000 nonprofit arts organizations, the National Endowment for Arts, the National Endowment for the Humanities, and the nation's 4,500 local arts agencies and the nation's arts and humanities councils annually issue official proclamations designating October as National Arts and Humanities Month. And whereas the arts and humanities embody much of the accumulated wisdom, intellect, and imagination of humankind, and whereas the arts and humanities enhance and enrich the lives of our families, our communities, and our country, and whereas the humanities help diverse communities across the United States explore their history and culture, and whereas the arts and culture industry strengthens our economy by generating $166.3 billion in total economic activity annually, and $27.5 in government revenue, and by supporting the full-time equivalent of 4.6 million jobs. And whereas the creative economy drives tourism and commerce, supports American workers, makes up to 4.5% of the annual gross national product, and proposed uh, federal legislation titled the CREATE Act, S650 and HR, 1519 and the Place Act, Senate Bill 3232, I would support economic development of the creative economy. Therefore, I, Mike Vanderstein, the mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim October of 2020 as National Arts and Humanities Month in Sheboygan and call upon our community members to celebrate and promote the arts and culture in our nation and to encourage everyone's participation to take action to support the arts and humanities. So I'd like to present this to Katie and the rest of the, the people in here and thank them for everything that they do. And I wanted to offer Katie a little chance to, to say a few words. Many of these organizations are really in need of uh, more support and sponsorship during this tough time during the pandemic. So Katie, the floor is yours. Well, thank you for your recognition of Arts and Humanities Month. I'm Katie Gladusky, the Executive Director at the Weill Center, and I'm proud to briefly speak on behalf of the amazing consortium of arts and humanities leaders in our community who are here with me today. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, we saw how much the world needed arts. The arts brought us together while we were apart. People sang off balconies together, enjoyed live concerts from the comfort of their couch, downloaded art projects, read books, took virtual tours of some of the best museums in the world and more. In our community, our arts organizations worked and still work together to support each other. We're all invested in collaborating when possible and helping each other succeed because together we make Sheboygan a vibrant place for arts and culture. But as you can imagine with the COVID pandemic, our organizations need your support and the support of our community now more than ever to safely engage with our guests, stay relevant on a virtual platform and for some of us simply to survive. The mayor asked if we could share how the community can support our organizations this month and throughout the year. Rather than having everyone present, we prepared a brief takeaway piece to share with the council members. 
On the one pager in front of you, you'll learn a little bit about all of our organizations, what we do, who we serve, as well as ways you can support our individual organizations. We have a few specific asks of you this month. Simply learn and share about our organizations. Take the time to educate yourself and your constituents on the benefits of engaging with the arts and humanities this October. It's easy enough as highlighting us in your e-blasts, on your website, in your social media posts, and you are always invited to visit any of our areas of work for a tour, a chat, or a special experience so you can share your firsthand knowledge with your constituents. So with that, we look forward to seeing you soon, and thank you again for your recognition of such an important month. I think our world needs it right now. Very welcome. Why don't we just uh, step out here and, and take a picture, Ryan? Can you shoot one? Yep. A few other announcements um, on returning your absentee ballot. If you're opting to vote absentee, note that the ballots need to be returned by election day to be counted. The options for returning ballots include by mail or via our two official boxes, drop boxes. You can bring it uh, to your polling location on election day as well. There's a new official absentee ballot drop box located in the drive on the west side of the Mead Public Library, and it's available 24 hours a day. There's also a drop box that is inside of City Hall, right next to the entrance door, and that is open from uh, Monday through Friday at 7.30 a.m. until 4.30 a.m. Uh, this weekend, uh, we had a, a Roots kickoff uh, at Evergreen Park, area number five. Um, I want to thank the restoration of our tree Sheboygan roots and the Sheboygan Rotary Clubs for their contribution to the Emerald Ash Borer Mitigation Project. Uh, this included tree planting projects with local municipal governments to combat the devastation caused by the Emerald Ash Borer infestation at Evergreen Park last Saturday. The leaders and representatives from the city of Sheboygan, Rotary District 6270, the Sheboygan Rotary Club, the Early Bird Rotary Club, and Alliant Energy as sponsor of the project, and uh, Lakeshore Natural Resources Partnership spoke to the significance of these projects and participated in a tree planting ceremony. The Sheboygan EAB mitigation project includes the planting of 127 substantial non-ash trees in six of our city's most popular and utilized parks. Uh, total project value will exceed $79,000, so we thank them for that assistance. Today at 7 o'clock this morning, Sheboygan Park Department started to accept 2021 reservations for park shelters and picnic areas. If you want to have an event at a city park, uh, see city staff at the Department of Public Works at 2026 New Jersey Avenue. Reservations need to be made in person and paid in full. And I understand that if you're paying with a credit card, they will take some phone orders. National Night Out is uh, having an annual community building camp is an annual community building campaign that promotes police and community partnerships and neighborhood camaraderie. This has always been a well celebrated summer event in Sheboygan, but this could not be scheduled this year in person due to the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, there will be a virtual national night out tomorrow, Tuesday, October 6th, from 4 o'clock to 6.30. It will be a virtual Facebook event. They're asking the community to turn your porch lights on and share photos from previous years when you've attended. From October 12th through November 20th, uh, the city of Sheboygan residents are allowed to rake leaf piles into the street gutter area for pickup by the Department of Public Works crews. Please rake the leaves away from the curb to create space for water to flow properly and prevent flooding from any storm sewers. There are five collection zones in the city, one for each day of the week, and you can see the DPW website for more information. Thank you.
The next item on the agenda is our 2021 executive budget program. And for that, we'll turn it over to, to Administrator Wolf for uh, program. Thank you, Mayor. Hard to believe three months ago, I never thought I'd be standing up here delivering the, the executive program budget. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Department Heads. So you should have already received um, our executive program budget in brief, and you should have received the, uh, the letter from myself to, uh, to the members of the, of the council and, and Mayor Vandersteen. So there should be plenty of information for you guys uh, to review, and if you have questions, please let us know. So moving forward, our city's, uh, our city's mission statement, as you guys know it well, um, ha has not changed, and our, and our vision statement has also not, not changed. Our city's values, though, I'd really like to uh, review those with everybody. Accountability, fiscal responsibility, innovation, respect, service, and teamwork. These are six values that I believe that we need to focus stronger on in the future. And really, I'd like to see us add communication also. These are things that really make us what we are today, and we use them daily. <clears throat> Moving to the next one. Uh, state and city restraints. As you can see, this, uh, we have our state laws, our, our tax levy, um, our budget parameters, our expenditure restraint program, tax rate CPI or lower, minimum fund balance, and our target of 25%, which we've continuously um, perform better. So I just want to be reminding everybody about our limitations. It's a balancing act, which I found very interesting, obviously, in the last couple of months. We're looking to uh, better plan for our TID closures. We're looking to map out a strategic plan for the future of each TID closure so that we can look at growth and projects in the future. Obviously, this limits what we can, uh, can raise tax levies also with our, with our restraints. Next. I'm sorry, go back one. Can you go back? Okay, perfect. Nope, you're good. Um, tax levy limits, I just wanted to touch on that. The state, the state law restricts uh, the percentage of increase of our city's tax levy based on several areas. Previous tax levy year, um, our, new, our net new construction, which technically uh, we had a 2.89% or an 84,255,500 for 2020. Our TID closures, as you all know, TID 11 closed, and that gave us 99,148, or 45, sorry. And then uh, TID subtractions. Next. So when we talk about our expenditure restraint program, obviously that allows us to increase the general fund expenditures by 60% of the percent increase of the city's net new construction and the allowable CPI. We also have the 2021, the city is estimating a 3.1 allowed increase in expenditures. Please understand that our constraint growth and development is better uh, than a spike. So what I mean by that is year over year, if we were to have continuously uh, have development within the city, um, would actually affect us better on our, on our taxes than um, a spike like we had last year. So if you remember back in 2019, we had a little bit of a problem with, uh, with our, um, some, some of our development not carrying over by the IRS. So we kind of got penalized because this last year we actually had a large growth. Next. Equalized tax rate and CPI or lower. <clears throat> Estimated consumer price index is 1.4. In 2021, executive budget recommends an equalized tax rate of negative 7.98. Next. So when we look at our assessed tax rate, um, our 2020 is estimated due to timing. Uh, 2021, we had a, we're looking to have a 15 cent or a 1.49 uh, 
Um, and you can find that in your budget facts sheet. In 2020, just to re review, we had a 13 cent or a 1.33%. And in 2019, we actually had a, a 19 cent per thousand or a, a 1.194%. Next. Our fund balance, um, this is quite unique. The city's goal is to maintain a fund balance. 25% of the year of the next year's budgeted general fund expenditures. That's our target. And we do a very, very good job of that. Um, we're also fiscally responsible and we use that as our safety net. Consistent with our Moody's credit services recommendations on the calls that I've been on. This has been a, a very good thing for us to help us maintain our AA2. Our 2021 executive budget fund balance is approximately 41%. So remember, our goal is 25%, we're at 41%. Last year, we were at 39%. And if you remember, we actually, um, I believe it was back in 2018, we actually used $5 million to help the remodel out of our fund balance. So again, we've already replaced it and we're already at 41% for 2021. We have to be cautious on spending and expenditures due to COVID. But the additional, we are looking to have some additional training and munis um, upgrades to get us off the AS400. So a lot of these are gonna be looking at to come out of the, um, our fund balance in the future. Next. So as you can see in this uh, graph, our uncommitted fund balance, you can see how, how we've been increasing our executive uh, our target we shoot to be is at 9,995,259. 9, That's the 41%. And if you look at where we are, we're at the 16,280,752, our actual fund balance. Next. So on here, you can see our 2020 budget facts. So if you guys can't sleep tonight or the game is not looking so good, you can look this over. Oh, we'll be fine. <laughs> Next. This is our favorite page, property tax levy, um, just because it's so colorful. You can see that it's consistently split. Uh, we've had an increase in our property tax levy uh, by 50,667. We increased that for the Mead Public Library levy portion. Uh, that'll give them a 2% for their uh, wages. Uh, we had a decrease of $40,716 in the levy for transit, so we reduced what we were, our contribution there. Our debt service, we did increase $299,043. And our capital improvements, we uh, decreased by $80,025 to $812,000. So by doing that, it allowed us to have these increases in the Mead Public Library and um, our debt service. Next. Our 2021 personal personnel changes. Um, our first one was uh, an FTE, Program Coordinator Senior Services. That is actually net neutral to the budget. Um, the Friends Group for the Senior Center is actually funding that through the city. The second one is uh, uh, an FTE uh, page supervisor that was requested by the Mead Public Library. Um, that will have to be reviewed by the uh, Public, Li Public Library Board of Trustees for final approval. We were not able to provide them with additional funding for that. Be, um, we're trying to obviously maintain the budget and keep it net neutral. Uh, the third one is the transfer of one FTE in Public Works Streets and Sanitation. And that was actually planned in the 2020 budget and it's just kind of happening now. Next. <coughs> In this one, you can see our general fund revenues. You can see how it all, how it breaks out with all of the different departments. Next. The details are here for the general fund revenues. Next. The 2021 general fund expenditures. Um, again, this is basically the breakdown from all, from, you know, public works, public safety, a general government, um, all of our transfers. We're very consistent. We've had, we have a, a flat budget. So the team did a great job uh, 
looking at under every rock to be able to see what we what do we need and what do we have to to still man, maintain next here are the details that you can see from 2020 to 2021 next special revenue uh, special revenue funds expenditure uh, this is basically changes in our in these areas are minimal as you can see um, just looking through it, you can see the general government, the public safety, public works, very minimal overall. Next. Special revenue funds notables. Uh, basically, this is where we have the urban forestry management plan, uh, contribution of 110,000, neighborhood revitalization. Uh, this is the second year of TIT 11 uh, increment. Uh, the South 10th Street, Reconstruction ADA infrastructure. This is also from, uh, which is 72,000. This is also coming from the TIT 11 increment. The Stonebrook Crossing subdivision grading. Uh, this is being uh, brought to us through the park impact fees. So that'll be $50,000 $50, out of there. And then the increase in tax levy contribution for the Mead Public Library. That is the, um, the funds that were provided for the uh, 50,667, um, that, that'll be used by the Mead Public Library for um, wage increases for the year. Next, oh, sorry, uh, special revenue fund notables. This is really where everybody kind of asks, how, how are we doing? So tourism room tax revenue uh, due to pandemic has a decrease of negative 546,000 estimated the Harbor Center Marina, we're looking at estimated 225,000 negative, and we're continuing to transfer. Um, we are moving things uh, as far as receipts in that, we're looking at 26,000 is anticipated, and we're also looking at the marina rentable storage units of 25,000. So there, one of the things that I did wanna bring up is that there is a lot of use in the area due to the local businesses. So when we talk about the hotels and things like that, they're actually doing better than estimated. And a lot of that I can tell you is from my past life uh, because there's there are businesses in the local area like in Sheboygan Falls that um, actually had to bring in like 60 plus employees to temporarily live in Sheboygan, um, in Sheboygan Falls because of the pandemic. So that obviously brought in quite a bit of revenue. That's not a norm. Next. So the debt service fund. Uh, this is quite interesting. So basically in the 2020 and 2021 is deceiving. So part of this that we want you guys to remember is when we did the 18 to 19 and 19 into 20, if you remember, we were moving a lot of dollars in the, in the, uh, general obligation because of the, the borrowing for South Point and for the, um, for the remodel of, of uh, City Hall. The same thing is going to happen basically in 2021 and that's why you see an uptick of 36.01%. The reason that's actually showing is the NANs that we did for, um, it, for our past obligation did not show up in our debt. So now they're going to become geo debt, which will actually show up. So now we're borrowing this in 2020, but we're actually expensing it or spending it in 2021. <clears throat> so this will, the reason we're doing this is we wanted to get away from the, the NANs. We needed to um, extend it into the geo debt. But I also wanted to remind you that the, the actual interest rates are much better, much more um, pleasant. And that's another reason why we're doing it. Next. So the debt service fund notables, um, as you can see, property tax levy increases of $299,043. We still are maintaining our Moody's uh, AA2, and it's been very favorable for us. Uh, late 2020 refunding of the 10 and a half million NAN, so the timing difference and the expenditure offset, as I explained before. The 2021 uh, planned geo debt um, issue of 
$254,038 to fund the approved uh, 2021 Capital Improvements Fund. And that was approved in June of 2021. 2020, sorry. Next. Capital projects. Just to kind of review those real quick. Um, so we have the traffic flow improvement of 14th and Taylor and Erie and Kohler Avenue, Kohler Memorial, sorry. Uh, that's a million nine hundred forty-three eight hundred. <clears throat> we have the Geely Avenue, um, so North Third Third Street to Calumet Drive. That's a million dollars. The four police squads and the, and the computer upgrades of two hundred forty-three thousand. We have the Butson Sports Complex of one hundred ninety thousand. We have the sidewalk improvements um, citywide, which is our typical 100,000. We have the LED uh, street, street lighting upgrade uh, citywide of 60,000. The one thing I did want to bring to the council is that the senior center is not included in this, in this funding. We're looking to come back to you and ask to use fund balance. We'll also be applying for a HUD 108 loan. So There'll be some information coming to you guys uh, in the future. Next. TID related capital projects. Uh, TID 19, North Commerce Street and con um, construction, that's two and a half million. TID 17, South Pier Street expansion is a million. TID 17, Indiana Avenue tra trail project phase one is uh, 875,000. TID 17, Indiana Avenue Streetscape Improvements, 750,000. And then TID 20, our newest uh, TID, is South Business Drive, Georgia Avenue, intersection improvements of 700,000, and that's the Oscar project, just to remind you. Next. Proprietary funds expenditures, as you can see above, they includes uh, water utility for projects and increases. Next. So on this page, basically, it outlines uh, the water utility. Um, so you have the South Lakeshore Sewer Interceptor of upwards of $10 million. Uh, sewer line reconstruction relining of a million dollars, and that's a, that's a project that is continuously happening throughout the city. Aer aeration uh, blower number two replacement, that's 350000 and again, that's an ongoing plant maintenance upgrade. So you're gonna see increased billing costs uh, to the water utility of 125,000. Also due to that is the chemical treatment costs of 37,430. And the estimated increase will be a 4%, which is um, approved. So the water utility board of water um, commissioners approves their increase and the wastewater um, increases are approved by the public state commissioners and they approve it every one to two years um, by the DNR. Next. So proprietary funds notables, employee health insurance premiums increase 5%, employee HSA contribution reinstated 375,200, transit maximizing CARES Act funding so transit uh, facility maintenance upgrades is 200,000, and then paratransit vehicles is 260,000. One of the things I did want to outline and talk a little bit about is the IT 6% and the motor vehicle 2.5% maintenance fee increase um, continuation. This is, a, this is a process that the city's been undertaking the last few years. So we're charging each department. So if it's IT related, they get charged 6%. And then if it's uh, a vehicle related, then they, they get hit with a 2.5% maintenance fee. This is basically to allow the city to not have to borrow so much. So by internally charging it to each department, then we're able to build a fund so that we're able to replace our fleet on a strategic plan. So this is a really good way to actually manage and not have to borrow for funds in the future. So it's to help us support and be self-sufficient in the future. Next. So bringing all good things to an end and trying to keep you guys awake, our budget information, as you can see, 
is here at the City Hall, Mead Public Library, um, and it's also on our website. And uh, again, I just want to have a shout out to the city staff and Carrie um, for everybody that's had to work on this and the, the countless hours, um, especially in the finance department with, with Marty and his team. Um, budget time is very difficult. We're trying to find ways to streamline it, but, and I think we will get there year over year. We're, get, we're making strides to make sure that the information is much easier to, to get and that it's uh, obviously accurate and efficient for us to get this information to you guys. So that, that's my presentation, thank you. Thank you very much, Administrator Wolf, for that presentation. Are there any questions? Mayor? Go ahead. Um, not necessarily a question, but I, I do just wanna echo um, just the thanks uh, for um, Administrator Wolf's uh, work on this coming you know, three months, you know, kind of new into Just this. under three months, yeah. yeah. Um, and Carrie, you know, we're glad to have you back as well, too, for all your work on this. And Marty, the finance department help, and all the department heads, too. I know that um, budgets aren't an easy thing, especially with planning for um, the uncertain future as well. So, um, and definitely encourage the elders once this budget gets um, uh, disseminated and we'll kind of, you know, pick at it and look at it through the, at the committee level too. So please take time and I know in our leadership meetings, we've had a lot of conversations about the budget process and how this is gonna impact um, a lot of different services in our city. So um, it'll be interesting stuff. So just wanna encourage everyone to do their homework and um, ask some good questions. Thank, Thank you, you for those comments. And yeah. just to remind everyone, um, this year, the budget in brief is what we're gonna be handing out. We're not gonna be handing out the large full binder of all of the details. Um, if any alder does want that, uh, let us know and we'll, we'll provide them a digital copy. But there's just so much redundancy in that, in that um, information that the budget in brief really provides everybody with the information that they need. Thank you. Thank you very much, Administrator Wolf. Great job. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. That'll include items 3.2 through 3.8. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file all uh, reports of officers, receive all reports of committees, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items on the consent agenda? Seeing uh, no discussion, uh, would the clerk please call the roll for passage? Nine eyes. Motion passes. We'll move on to reports of officers. Item 4.1 is RO number 77 of 2021 by the City Planning Commission, to whom was referred resolution number 88 of 2021 by Alderperson Boren and RO number uh, 70 of 2021 by the City Clerk submitting a final plat for Stonebrook Crossing edition number one and recommends receiving the RO and adopting the resolution with specific conditions. A, the applicant shall obtain all subdivision approval from the appropriate agencies, including but not limited to the city, the county, the state of Wisconsin, the DNR, et cetera. B, the applicant shall submit a final plats that meet the city of Sheboygan subdivision ordinance. C, the developer's agreement shall be executed prior to signing any of the final plats. D, the applicant shall submit a temporary signage uh, to staff for review. If staff has any concerns with the proposed signage design, the matter may be brought back to the Planning Commission for their consideration. In addition, your commission reports that, that as part of this consideration is considered and granted the request for variance as follows. The street standard for Stony Brook Crossing edition number one will be pavement with a uh, with a marked on the street path with drainage ditch as proposed. Only the main streets, Stony Brook Drive and Rim Rock Road will have on the street four foot wide pedestrian bike paths that will be located on each side of the road. No street trees will be required. Alderperson Bourne. 
receive, I make a motion to receive the RO and adopt the resolution with conditions. Second. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The document is before us. Is there any questions? Mayor, I just wanted to make a couple comments, uh, Alderman Boren. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Stonebrook uh, development over here in my district, 10 Ward 23, uh, is going to be well over 100 residential homes. <coughs> And the price point of those homes from uh, what I learned at our uh, plan commission meeting last week are gonna be anywhere from about 240,000 up to $500,000 uh, per home. And uh, the property taxes that, they're, that that's going to generate is probably anywhere from $5,500 on the low end up to almost $8,000 for the high end houses. So that's gonna be a tremendous addition to our, our, our property tax base which is gonna be uh, desperately needed and, uh, as, as time goes along. So I'm very excited to see this Stonebrook uh, development kick off and uh, the benefits it's gonna bring us as far as property tax revenue. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. Next, I'd like to call on Chad Pelichek. Thank you. I just wanna echo Alderman Bourne's comments and say that um, we're very thankful for the efforts that the Warner uh, Homes Group has put together. This is the first time we're having a new subdivision in this community in probably 18 years. And it's the first time where the city has not put the infrastructure in, the developers putting the infrastructure in. So uh, echoing what Alderman Bourne said, this is about a $50 million ad once fully uh, built out to our tax base and the first subdivision that we've had in a number of years. So I just want to thank the Warner Homes Group for uh, working with us through multiple steps to get to the finish line. Thank you very much for those comments, Chad. Is there any other discussion? Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my question is about the parkland. I unfortunately was not present at the last DPW meeting when this was brought back for discussion. Um, I'm wondering how much of the currently um, the current city parkland is going to be um, developed under this revised design. Chad, Un please un answer. Under the plan, the parkland will not be disturbed. They re reconfigured the roads and the lots to not have any impact with the uh, current three-acre parcel that's dedicated as parkland. Um, under the development agreement, they actually will be will be purchasing another lot or two to get access to that parkland in lieu of parking of park impact fees. So we're waiving new uh, park impact fees for the cost of basically trading with them to get the lot to be able to access that existed wooded area. Thank you for those Glad comments. Thank you. Are there any other questions or discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? I'm going to take a roll call. Um, Alderperson Donahue? Aye. Alderperson Bourne? Aye. Alderperson Sorensen? Aye. Alderperson Savaglio? Aye. Alderperson Decker? Aye. Alderperson Phillips? Aye. Alderperson Mitchell? Aye. Alderperson Feldy? An appreciative eye. <laughs> Alderperson Flicky Paneski. Aye. Nine eyes. Motion passes. Next, uh, let's see, items 4.2 and 4.3 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, item 5.1 is res resolution number 97 of 2021 by Alderperson Sorensen and Decker, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute an agreement with GIS Inc. 
to develop a software tool to allow the Sheboygan Police Department to analyze its data with the city's ESRI GIS software. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I call for the suspension of the rules. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none. I would like to object. <clears throat> Go ahead. I have a question about why we are suspending the rules. Alderperson Sorensen. Um, I guess I don't have an answer on that one. Does the chief or mayor want to answer that one? We're suspending the rules because we're using CARES funds to pay for the project and the funds have to be spent and the work completed um, within the next three weeks. Thank you for that explanation. Uh, older person Flicky Paneski, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, one more call. Is, is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, with the Please proceed with your motion. Thank you, Mayor. I move to adopt the, the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The motion is on the floor. Is there any discussion? I have a question for the Chief Mayor. Please go ahead, Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> uh, Chief Domagowski, I read, I read over this document, but uh, I couldn't get much out of it as far as exactly what this software is going to do for your department. Could you kind of describe it for us, please? Sure. They're, what they're doing is creating an interface so that our records management system data can be pushed out to the city's ESRI system and it can be mapped and the analytical tools that are available through the city's GIS system can be used to analyze that data. Okay, thank you. That helps. <laughs> Is there any other discussion? I have a question. Please proceed, Alderperson Savaglio. Thank you. Um, could you expand on that a little bit more, uh, Chief? Uh, like, how will this benefit the police department of the city overall? Sure, the efficient and effective use of our resources requires us to know what's going on and how best to deploy those resources as things change. So in this case, um, in the pandemic, we um, yeah, receive and share information with other government entities um, and by, by take, being able to take that data and put it in the GIS system, we can better um, understand what's happening in real time, have better situational awareness to make decisions and push those decisions down to the lowest level rather than uh, up at top because more of that information is available in real time and in a, a manner that is understandable by more people. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? I'll try one more time here. Nine eyes. Motion passes. Item uh, 5.2 will lay over till our next meeting. That's uh, uh, the recognition of Keeney Park Neighborhood Association. Items 5.3 through 5.7 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 6.1 is RC number 154 of 2021 by the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. To whom was referred resolution number 91 of 2021 by Alderperson Sorensen and Decker, authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into an agreement with Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Sheboygan County Incorporated regarding the Bigs with Badges program and recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Sorensen. Thanks, Mayor. I move to receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Thank you for that motion and support. That, di that motion is before you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage?
Nine eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is RC number 155 of 2021 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 95 of 2021 by Alderpersons Donahue and Bourne authorizing entering into professional services agreement with MSA Professional Services Incorporated for a City of Sheboygan comprehensive affordable housing study and recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Donahue. I move to uh, receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolutions. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. That motion's before you. Is there any discussion? Alderman Felicki Paneski here. Please go I ahead. Would, I would just like to I would just like to support this. I think it's um, significant and I think it's an important baseline for our continued growth and the growth of the community. Thank you for those comments. Chad, did you want to make a comment? Okay. Seeing no other discussion, would the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is RC number 156 of 2021 by the Public Works Committee. To whom was referred direct referral resolution number 96 of 2021 by all the persons Decker and Sorensen authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with both Infrastructure and Environment LLC for the Sheboygan Five Year Restoration Plan and recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to other matters authorized by law. I'll turn it over to City Attorney Charles Adams. There's just one matter, and that is uh, item uh, 8.1, submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2022. That'll be referred to the licensing hearings and public safety committee. Next, uh, Alderperson Sorensen. All right, seeing that we have, have a Packer game tonight, we've exhausted the agenda, I move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Back. All those in favor of adjournment and the Packers winning tonight, please <laughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Let's go. <laughs>